So I must warn you, this video is going to be different. I don't normally bring national issues into these videos about our beautiful state of Washington, but I'm going to go a little rogue today. So unless you've been living under a rock or you just got back from a two-week wilderness excursion off the grid on the Pacific Coast Trail, you've probably heard a lot about the recent collapse of FTX and uh, the crypto exchange and its corrupt founder, Democratic Party mega donor, 30-year-old Sam Bankman-Fried. Probably you've heard about him over the last week or so. And uh, to my audience, I must apologize, because seriously, I, I really have other topics that I want to discuss. And I promise that uh, I'll post a video on Washington State's election results, but I just can't help but address this bizarre FTX, Sam Bankman free crypto exchange kind of con artist circus, because I just feel compelled to put it in the context of kind of this daily grind that we all must endure as we observe the crooks, the clowns, the weirdos, and the kind of overwhelming goofiness of the guys that actually run government at so many different levels today. So Sam Bankman Freed may be getting all the attention right now, but he's far from alone in this kind of herd mentality, woke virtue signaling facade that much of our governmental regimes seem to just exude everywhere they go. So not to mention, we also are dealing with this bureaucratic black holes, the grant grifting nonprofits, or the academic kind of cesspool that festers away pretending uh, to have higher education, but really corroding it. And of course, we can't forget the completely corrupted corporate media that goes out of its way to protect this kind of edifice that we've built. And this has been cobbled together and it's been created to rule over us, we the governed. So let's just be honest, the only difference between Sam Bankman Freed and this FTX crypto exchange and the rest of these clowns is the fact that he got caught and exposed. And apparently he did take it serious when somebody told him, go big or go home, he went big. So just in case you did actually just get back from a two week snowshoe trip on the Wonderland Trail, maybe around Mount Rainier, or you were practicing a multi-week wilderness survival course out on the Olympic Peninsula, and you have no idea who or what the heck I'm talking about when I refer to FTX or the crypto exchange or Alameda Research or Sam Bankman Freed, I'll just summarize this kind of unfolding drama for you because I've also linked, by the way, to some of my favorite videos and articles below. If you wanna actually dig deeper, and I'd encourage you to do so, uh, there's a lot to read there. It's really worth doing the research, but uh, I'll confess I'm, I become kind of sort of mesmerized by the circus because it echoes on just a much bigger stage that what I've kind of seen in a smaller level with government my entire career as a watchdog and an activist. Sam Bankman Freed, this guy's uh, an MIT graduate. He was born to two leftist Stanford University professors, one of whom conveniently uh, ran a leftist shady dark money organization to get out the vote. So Sam decided that he wanted to get rich using crypto, arbitrage, and other kind of cool sounding crypto exchange programs and a kind of a rat's nest of interlocking corporations, approximately about 130 of them, which he launched in 2019, so fairly recently. And uh, then he's been operating this out of the Bahamas, which is uh, convenient, much nicer to locate there than anywhere else. So we don't have really have time in this video to get into the details of the fake business plans or the pretend products that he used to justify the scam and uh, it could be fun to discuss that all in more detail, but in the end, it really doesn't matter. As the world learned recently, conveniently, shortly after election day, of course, uh, Sam was just one big fraud. Now, you can read more about it, again, the beautiful and obvious con game that he ran by linking to any of these articles I referenced earlier, but like most modern businessmen, con artists, tech leaders, and politicians too, he did this whole ESG, super woke, world economic forum, kind of posing for the public and the fawny media, and he raised billions of dollars, billions, uh, from major hedge funds like Sequoia Capital, Japan SoftBank, and these other big name investors who just, just continue to dump these billions of dollars into Sam Bankman Freed's magical money making machine. Now, if he just wasted their cash, uh, and this would just be kind of a funny comedy show, and we would mock the big suckers who got conned once again. But unfortunately, Sam was not content to just vanish the cash from the big guys. Sam Bankman Freed apparently also convinced millions of smaller retail customers to entrust him with their hard earned cash, which has mostly disappeared at this point as well. So how much are we really talking about here? Well, it's, it's at least $8 billion, maybe more. I mean, this guy's corporation was actually valued at $32 billion not that long ago, so it's big. However, the reason nobody's really sure is because this kind of weird political corporate scam did a good job concealing the truth by using auto erasing programs to communicate corporate decisions in-house. This is sort of like the text message system used by the past mayor of Seattle. 
On top of that, when making spending decisions, they apparently use personalized emojis to approve internal staff recommendation and uh, rather than follow any kind of normal procedure that would exist if you were actually running a real company. Additionally, for a multi-billion dollar finance corporation, Sam conveniently just didn't bother to set up an accounting department. And these con artists kept no complete records, uh, apparently, of bank accounts, a list of employees, customer account information, or pretty much anything else that would allow a normal level of due diligence to be conducted by any investor before that same investor would dump their cash into the Sam Bankman Freed money shredder operation. Now, this entire fiasco in bankruptcy uh, court right now, it's just, it's actually in court in two different places. And that is a messy process at the best of times. The guy overseeing this bankruptcy, at least on the US side, is a well known professional who oversaw many other spectacular corporate con implosions like Enron. Now, this poor guy is trying to sort out the mess left behind by Sam Bankman Fried and his merry band of fellow travelers. And as I said before, I've linked to these original source documents, which actually make for entertaining reading if you like reading about financial train wrecks. But let me give you just a little personal background here. Uh, before I ever got into political activism and reporting on government, I was a small player at a couple of very small startups during the dot-com era in the late 1990s and early 2000s. And I remember the hype and the, the drama, the facades and the implosion that happened in the end. And I was usually on the operational side of these projects. And that meant I was kind of peripherally involved in helping to raise money for those small, obviously high risk little ventures at that time as well. Now I was less involved in the fundraising uh, than I was involved in helping the VCs or the big investors when they did their due diligence. Uh, even for the minor and small projects I worked on, these were pretty grueling experiences, often meeting with a battery of specialists that were employed by uh, the big money guys or these outside entities that they entrusted to help with their investigation due diligence uh, before they'd write the big checks. This usually included engineers, programmers, accountants, and others who would invade our offices and dig through everything before they would even consider writing a relatively modest checks. And at the time, I actually welcomed these reviews because sometimes they would see something that I had missed, frankly, and I was usually very proud of the project I was working on at the time. I wanted to show it off, and I believed not just that I had nothing to hide, but I wanted them to find any flaws that I had missed. Now, having that experience in my past, I can absolutely promise you that none of these corporate investors who dump billions of dollars in cash to enter FDX and Sam Bankman Freed's magical money making machine did any type of honest due diligence. None at all. Now, regardless of what they'll probably claim tomorrow, there's just no way this level of willful incompetence and corruption would have escaped even just the minor level of due diligence that you'd need to do before you write checks like this. But again, you know, if this was just another story of a con artist and a scam, I just wouldn't be that interested. What makes this epic con and Sam Bankman Freed scam so impressive was how much major buy-in he accumulated in such a short time by some of the world's most influential people. And if we can understand how this happened, then I believe it will really help us better understand how modern government functions in our state and our country today. Sam Bankman Freed grew his multi-billion dollar con in essentially three ways. Number one, buy off the corporate media. Give them grants, send them cash, buy advertisements, filter cash payouts through like charities, whatever you have to do. The point is to get softball interviews, glamorous articles, loud voices of allies and admirers or whatever the cost. This was key for Sam to keep the music going while the chairs were disappearing. If you read these articles today before the deleted and erased, you'll see what I mean. I mean, this was just a brilliant part of the scam that he was running and a critical part at that. Now, so number two, what he had to do is he had to buy off the politicians and the regulators. Sam Bankman Freed was the second largest donor to the Democratic Party over the past few years. He was second only to George Soros. Now, you think about that. A 30-year-old who is dropping eight-figure contributions to PACs, President Biden, Democratic Party leadership, organizations, politicians, regulatory bodies indirectly, and doing it in such a big way that they're going to be hard-pressed to actually question you or to challenge you. You're their buddy. Yeah, sure, he dropped a few dollars of campaign cash to some Republicans who sat conveniently on the oversight committees who might be called upon to regulate his business someday, but that was just the price he had to pay to grow his political friends list. In fact, if you look back at hearings, you're going to see all these politicians fawning over his public testimony and then attacking anybody else who dared to testify in D.C. and question the FTX crypto exchange con. Now, this takes serious cash and a carefully purchased and burnished wokester image to get this type of treatment, even in DC. So from Sam's perspective, it was money well spent. 
which leads to number three. Finally, most importantly, Sam created the obligatory facade of this woke, cool, millennial ESG by sleeping on beanbags, wearing trainer shorts and wrinkled t-shirts in public. And uh, meanwhile, he'd be chatting there with Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, or Giselle, you know, Tom Brady's wife, you know, ex-wife now, at fancy international globetrotting forums. Uh, he would hire a bunch of his millennial friends, you know, make them all roomies, and then apparently sleep with all of them. <laughs> But you gotta slap your corporate logo and the name on sports stadiums in Miami and just pretty much everywhere else you can. Anybody you can convince to throw that out there. Now more amusingly, you gotta pretend that you drive a Corolla to work, but then don't let the public see your multi-million dollar yacht that's actually tied up at the yacht just a few hundred yards away. Keep quiet about the $300 million of Bahama, uh, Bahama property that you buy for everyone, including your parents, your coworkers, everybody else. And of course, critically, most importantly, at all times, you got to virtue signal your desire to make billions and give it all away to make the world a better place. Get some suckers to do a video puff piece about that. After all, image is everything. And by the way, there's nothing new about this. Absolutely nothing. In the waning days of the dot-com bubble, many startup VC-funded darlings did the exact same thing back then. They wasted billions of dollars, too. Bean bags, video games, Nerf gun fights in the cubicles, fancy aquariums, and all the trappings of modern nerd culture. And it's always fun to crash with the cool kids, particularly when you're wasting other people's money. Remember Google, uh, Google's original motto, right, which was don't be evil, was part of that image at the time. At least Google quietly dumped that archaic motto a few years ago because nobody claims Google would even attempt to live up to that aspiration today. FTX and Sam Bankman Freed were no different. And frankly, neither are those who run our government now. Keep in mind, if you can do this, and if you can do this well, you too can run a long con, vanish billions of dollars into the crypto ether with fawning media coverage and willful blindness from regulators and politicians. And if you paid off the right people, you won't have much in the way of consequences when the con collapses either. You can just say that your intentions were good. You believed in climate change. You said no to fossil fuels. You hate Trump and you know your pronouns really, really well. It's often all it takes to be accepted in the cool crowd. So what does this have to do with We the Governed and the usual topics that we cover? In similar, less overt and obvious ways, the type of behavior displayed by Sam Bankman Freed at FTX is replicated every day in local and state government. If you believe anyone anywhere in government is trying to make themselves more responsive to the public, more transparent in their decision making, or willing to be honest about the billions of your tax dollars that they waste on a regular basis, then you probably vote for the lefties already and you're hoping to get your share of other people's money. However, it's important to understand the nature of man and the unchanging fact, and uh, I'm going to actually quote James Madison here, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. If angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. In framing a government, which is to be administered by men over men, the great difficulty lies in this. You must first enable the government to control the governed and in the next place, oblige it to control itself. A dependence on the people is no doubt the primary control of the government, but experience has taught mankind the necessity of auxiliary precautions. Now, that's hundreds of years ago, and there's wisdom in this statement, and our founding fathers were nothing if they were not students of human nature. The challenge that faces activists like me, and presumably any of you still watching this video, who share my concern about the future of liberty and freedom in our nation and state, is the unfortunate fact that most people are purposely educated and conditioned to not question authority and to believe whatever they're told by the corporate media and their friends and government to believe. This isn't very American, which is a country that birthed in rebellion and revolution, but it is the way most of our neighbors see the world. We have to recognize this as a fact, and no amount of frustration in founders' quotes are going to change it. So I'll also point out that most people are frankly just too busy with the day-to-day -day drama in their own lives to give much attention to the government or the people who control that government today. If you're still watching this video, you're probably not like most people. However, we live in the real world with our family and our friends and our neighbors, mostly good people, who are concerned about how they'll pay for their gas, cover their mortgage, get their kids to soccer practice, whether someone will like their Facebook or Instagram posts last night, or how they'll pay their inevitable credit card bills for Christmas. They want to believe that good and honest people run our local government, just like I'm sure the millions of people who entrusted their hard-earned cash at FTX wanted to believe Sam Bankman Freed was an honest guy. The challenge that faces us today, of course, is that our government isn't run by angels, and the bigger it gets, the worse it becomes. 
the bloat of the administrative state, the legalized theft of our tax dollars into grant grifting operations using the same wokester shibboleths that Sam Bankman Freed recently admitted were just what he had to say to be accepted by insiders. These are serious impediments to freedom and liberty. The bigger they bloat, like some type of blob horror movie, the harder it becomes for us to constrain them. Have you ever wondered why the homeless drug addict problem only gets more worse the more cash we toss into the problem? Is there anyone running these operations who want to actually solve the problem? Or do they have the obvious incentive to make everything worse because that is how they get more cash every year? Is the total incompetence of local government to do anything right or to actually uh, do anything correctly, is that a feature or is it a bug of the modern administrative state? Why is it that almost everyone we have taken for granted as the purview of government, just almost everything there, that it's just gotten worse the more power that we cede to that same government? Public safety is clearly in decline. Public education is in total freefall collapse. It takes a lot of denial to pretend it's not. Pretending to care about the environment while growing and promoting homeless camps, for example, that just simply pollute it. Or elections that last for weeks, if not months, even though our country could conduct nationwide elections without electricity and by candlelight and horseback more efficiently 150 years ago. Why does government attack farmers and those who produce power while pretending to be mystified that the costs of both are increasing? You and I have no choice when it comes to engaging the political process. We don't. Sure, you can go and be a hermit in the woods, but they're eventually going to find you. We have to engage. We have to question authority, and we must expose the truth. Now, it's becoming obvious to more and more of our neighbors and friends that something's seriously wrong. Our traditional corporate media and the political class together, uh, they were the type of people that promoted FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried. Now that this long con and the con artists have been exposed, how many smaller Sam Bankman-Frieds do we have in local government? running our state agencies, or just promoting their nonprofit to save the world or the homeless with your cash. Our corporate media will continue to protect these guys, just like they protected FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried. They will want to silence or censor us when we try to question them or the reality facing our communities as a result. And this should not surprise you. However, neither should it intimidate you into submission. We owe it to ourselves, our community, and our children to speak truth to power to question authority, and to confront those who wish to continue their con games in government. In the end, every con will fail, just like FTX and Sam. I hope that we can expose them sooner, however, so that we can start finally beginning the process of fixing what is broken in our community, state, and country. Thank you so much for watching.